guys and been a while just springtime typical springtime shit working anywhere from 12 to 16 hours a day seven days a week trying to keep up with all this walnut shit everywhere um, that pickup wasn't sitting here the other day okay it's a, this is a cat 938h loader they're putting potash on this field out here and the deal is I came out here the first time it was having a, a crank no start and let me get to where I you could probably hear me and I can explain this a little bit more in detail Huey and Dewey, the shitter twins, out. Hang on a second. Okay. You want out or what? No? I thought there was a sack or something with these parts. I thought there was a sack with these parts. See what we got. I know there was a sack. There's a sack in here. Um, I know it was. There it is, right there. Josie, Josie, Josie. Anyway, um. So it had a long crank to start, or no crank, actually, it wouldn't start at all. What's this here? It's a hold down bolt. Okay, they give you a new hold down bolt. I don't know what the torque is on this because I haven't done one of these in a long time, but. That's my end boys. Just some kind of bulletin or what is this? Cat. Basically this is a 6.6 .6 Perkins is what it is. Espanol. No comprende. English is English isn't even in the son of a bitch, huh? So I guess. Huh. Okay. So I guess if you're an English speaking guy, then you just don't get any directions or shit, huh? Just if you're in Spanish, huh? Yeah. That's pretty cool, huh? Alright. Get a little lube. Ah oh, shit, the copper came off. That some bitch don't stay on there. I was gonna say it should kind of press on there where it doesn't come off. It's one of those deals I hooked the laptop up to it, and you could see what your rail pressure was, and it wouldn't start, and it was only building about 1,800 pounds of rail pressure. And you could see the DK, t you know, the DK. What I mean by the DK is that's a Cummins term, I think, because I've always mostly work on a lot of Cummins but it's a common rail fuel system so what that means is when you crank on it you should have a certain amount of rail pressure that is residual pressure in the rail even after you shut the key off and what I do is turn the key off cycle it back on real fast that way um, I can watch that DK or that residual pressure well as soon as I did that this thing just completely went to bam just a zero just like that and uh, ring. Let's get the laptop out. Find out what the uh, 
hold down torque because you got to pull the rockers out of this thing to get the you got to pull the rocker shafts out of this thing to get the to, to access the injector hold down bolt okay so i just need that for right now let me get a pair of rubber gloves on because this this engine oil i told John, I said, man, you need to change your oil on that. That stuff is black as molasses, or black as midnight. So anyways, guys, uh, what the deal is, I had, I've got all kinds of, a multitude of fuel lines that I've, if I get a new kit and it comes with new fuel lines, I'll keep the old ones and I'll cut the ends off and I'll make caps out of them. And uh, that's what I did. I took a few different ones with me when I came out here to diagnose it. Well, a little bit more to the story here. The first time I came out, the first thing I checked was the relief valve. We're gonna have to get up there and pop that valve cover off first. And I pulled the return line off the leaf, leaf valve and I put my remote starter cranking starter button on here and I cranked on it and fuel was coming out the relief valve. So I bought a relief valve and put in it and I did that again, it still wouldn't start. But I did check it and it wasn't coming out of there anymore. So that was a problem too. And uh, anyway, I came that when I when I put the relief valve in, then I did the final diagnosis on it, and then I <clears throat> pulled the number six off right here, and I capped it, and then that and thing started right up on five cylinders. So I knew that was the problem was number six injector. And another little bit of part of that story, I actually got it running after I replaced the relief valve. And it had a fuel knock at an idle. And uh, I cut cylinders out one at a time. I wonder if I can get away with just laying that right there. Eh, probably not. But, uh, Anyway, uh, let me get the injector. <clears throat> so, I, uh, let's shit on the lens here. Let's grab an eight millimeter to see if I can try to make us, look how black that shit is, man. That shit is nasty, nasty shit. What was I saying? So. Oh, I cut the cylinders out one at a time, and when I got to number six, the fuel knock went away. It completely went away. And I had a suspicion it was number six, so that's the reason I went to number six first. And sure as shit, I put... I went to number six, and it, it was gone. Just like, I mean, I, I capped number six off, and it fired right up. Just like nothing. So I called the owner, and of course, you know, I'm doing... I know what everybody... Oh, why don't you just change all six of them, which I agree with that. I agree, but you know, hey man, I do what the customer wants, okay? And the customer wanted to only change one, so that's what we're doing. People don't understand how much money everything is costing right now, and I can completely understand why he only wants to change one. Everything is so outrageous. Because of these pieces of shit fucking commies that are running everything. Okay, where is... Oh, that's right. I didn't have a short one that fit that. It's a T40. And all I had was for a T40, which is better anyway. It was one of these long ones in here. I think it is now a T50. That should be a T40 right there. Yeah, it's a T40. Okay, let's drive ratchet. Alrighty. Also, I'll have to come back and get a torque wrench, get the laptop, figure out what the torque spec is. 
It's probably in Spanish there, but I am a second class citizen, so I don't get my language put in there. Our valve bridge at right here. These valve bridges, you gotta watch them, they'll pop off of there. Make sure all these valve bridges are on. They stick to the rockers when you pull them off, so and you'll think they're on, but one end will be off this valve stem and it'll really screw you. Kind of caught two of them being off. These are kind of a real piece of shit engine here. These things are. There's a little rubber sleeve type deal that goes over that. guys so the wind was blowing like crazy on this part of the video so that would be a good time to do a voiceover and I'll tell you about some other things going on and keep in mind here that if you hear some noise in the background uh, we we got another puppy um, and the puppy is playing with Josie and they're raising hell in here so uh, anyhow uh, Tell you a little story about the you guys. Remember the '83 Freightliner cab over that brown one that uh, I put injectors in, did some other work to this winter. Well, it didn't last very long, and I'll tell you what happened. So he made a trip with it, and it started missing. He lost a bunch of power. And he made it all the way over there and got his hay unloaded on the coast and came all the way back, basically, on five cylinders. And so, I, uh, he parked it at his house. He kind of lives over there towards Malin. It's about, 
about maybe, I don't know, 45 minutes away from my shop. So I went over there and I popped the valve covers off, all three of them, and fired it up. And, and I noticed that number six injector push rod wasn't really moving at all. And so I checked my valve adjustment and it was adjusted, you know, all, you know, you, you could see the amount of thread sticking out the rocker lever adjusting screw and it was the same as all the rest of them. So I thought, huh, what the hell's going on, you know? I thought the goddamn cam go flat. And so, yeah, the puppy's in there barking now. So anyway, uh, I, uh, I pulled the cam faller off the, the back, uh, the back ones. If, if it would have been the front cam faller where the, uh, oil pump and everything that would have been like no this, this ain't happening today but anyways pulled the back cam faller off and sure as hell the cam cam was cam was screwed up and the cam was flat and so i said i i just didn't think much about it to be honest with you and i called uh, the owner and i said hey man the cam went flat in this we're gonna have to put a cam in it and so uh we scheduled it all out he got he we tore it all down, and uh, the cam bearings and the rod, I mean, this thing has got like over a million on the last overhaul. It's been overhauled twice, and it's it's got about, I don't know, it's probably got two or three million miles on this thing. And so, anyways, uh, what had happened is we, we, we got it all apart, and the cam and bearings the rod main bearings the the after cooler which is water cooled was completely shot and it had it had leaked so bad that it had gone into the intake port on the front head and it had crystallized and i bet you couldn't stick two fingers through the intake port on that cylinder head where that stuff had crystallized in there and so anyways we were rebuilding this thing uh, a really big rebuild. I mean, this is a big one. I mean, we're doing cam bearings, camshaft, uh, new heads, um, rod pistons, liners, and the whole nine yards, man. This is a, I mean, uh, air compressor. Uh, he had the fuel pump sent off. It's being rebuilt. Uh, fuel shop said it was in really bad shape. It was definitely due. Um, what else? Um, yeah, it's just pretty much everything on the engine is getting replaced except for the crankshaft. So anyways, I, I got the cam bearings in. I got the liners in. It was kind of a hold up on the liners because we ordered the kit and we didn't realize that somebody, the last guy that overhauled it, had cut the block and put lower press fit liners in it instead of standard liners. So what they call sometimes 2040 liners. And so we had to reorder the right liners for it. And... Anyways, we got the liners, uh, rods and pistons, cylinder heads on, got the cam bearings in it. Uh, we didn't like the way the key the key looked that hold, held the cam to the cam gear, so we we held off on putting the cam in it till we got a new key. And so uh, I was going to put the injectors in it, and Dwayne, the owner, actually noticed it, that he said, look at this push rod. And I went over there and looked at the push rod, and the push rod was bent. And I thought, huh, them push rods were not bent before I put the injectors in it. And he goes, well, what the hell caused it? And so I, I got to looking at the injectors, and I had laid the injectors on the on the bed of the truck. It's a hay truck. It had a flat bed on it. And number six injector, I, I laid them out in sequential order. And number six injector was cleaner on the tip and of the injector than all the rest of them were and so i was looking at it there and i popped the link off the top of the injector and i i popped the link off another one and you could see where the plunger was stuck down on that new injector and i told i told uh i told Dwayne, i said look at this and he goes what and i said look at the difference so I took the link and I put in, in both and in, in both injectors and I put the link up against the bed of the truck on number five injector and I could push the injector link in by pushing on it. Now, 
Number six, I couldn't move that some bitch at all. And I said, you know what happened? That damn injector that we bought from Fleet Pride stuck halfway down, and it bent the push rod and took the cam out. And uh, anyhow, it was the owner wasn't mad. He goes, actually, I'm kind of glad it happened. I said, why is that? And he said, well, he, he said, look at all the stuff that's wrong with this thing. It's kind of a good thing it happened, and we can rebuild this thing and do it right. So he's a hell of a good guy, but I said, he's going to send that injector off and have them Oregon fuel injection. We're going to send all six of them to Oregon fuel injection and have them do all six of them because we don't trust them, obviously, now. So I thought I'd give you a little update on what that was go what was doing there all right we got the rockers in make sure i get the push rods seated up right i just i didn't i didn't adjust the valves on it i took it off and left them alone because i know i know it probably ain't the right thing to do but the owner said they so i had a fuel knock when it was down south and he said that they just ran the valves on it just trying to get rid of that knock because they thought it was something else going on and then, of course, that wasn't in. It was the injector. Make sure that this thing is seated up on all these push rods here. I think we're all right. Now, let's double check our valve bridges. Make sure they didn't move. So, I'm going to start up with the valve cover off. Uh, well, while I'm down here, let's turn the disconnect on. Because we're gonna these 6.6s on these loaders here they got a toggle switch here you can manually this it, there's a transfer pump on the back of the main pump right here that's what you usually pump in all your oil or your fuel but this is just a priming pump here I'll do that a little bit more here in a little bit let's climb up here and make sure that our valve bridges didn't move Honest. Which can surely happen with one of these. They're really temperamental. Okay, everything looks good as far as I can tell. Let's just hold this for about a minute. No, but that damn big cam Cummins, that injector stuck and took out the cam. Anyways, we... I, 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 I seen the push rod was bent, and I was like, what caused that? And then I had the injectors lay in there, and they were half... I mean, the, the number six injector, you could see, once you pulled the injector link out of it, it was stuck. I mean, you could see where the plunger was stuck down in it. Piece of shit, reman junk shit, man. I'm telling you. But at least you know, I set them the way they're supposed to be set in in the correct sequence according to the service manual. On them top stop injectors, you don't go and set them in firing order. I always get. I'd have to look at the book and tell you guys. It's like. When you're on A, you don't do like one. You don't do, you don't adjust the injector on the same on the same cylinder you adjust the valve. When you're doing one, you do like let's see, one five. You do number five, I think. You know, it, it's 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 going in sequence, but it's it's the it's the next one in firing order. If that makes any sense. Okay. Um, let's go see what happens. I don't think that's going to affect anything. I just want to start out with the valve cover off. <sighs> Nothing's going to go through the turbo or something like that. Okay. Ugh, that should latch. Okay, let's see what we got here. It'll take a little bit because we had, yep, we had the rail drained, remember, so. That should, 
go away because there's a bunch of fuel in that cylinder from having that injector out. sluggish because that charge here not on there or maybe that's why it's so sluggish I don't know we'll see now it would kind of it would kind of want to start when it was cold but once it warmed up I mean no we never gonna start you could have the laptop on it and watch your rail pressure it never would get above 1800 so we're gonna have to get the valve cover on it go drive it and just double check Let's just try it one more time now. Yep. Okay, I was 100% sure the other day it was number six because, I mean, as soon as I capped that off with it hot, because I went, I did it cold and it started up and I thought, well, you know, that's not a very good test. And then I, uh, I got to put that back in there. That's, well, that's not, they hit me. twist wire or something on that. That'll make it a little easier for me to get to them bolts there for the valve cover. All right, well, hang on a second. Right, let's get the old intake and put on there. We gotta put the air cleaner back in it. Air cleaner and air cleaner housing. Okay, this is the turbo end, I think. Which it looks like maybe the clamp is not on there. Um, am I got the right end here or not? I don't know. No. I see a clamp up there. What the hell is this other clamp go to? Um, is that the right end? Yeah, that appears to be the right end, so... Okay. Alrighty. There's another clamp up there. I'm just trying to figure out what the hell. Oh, it went up here. Must have went up here on top. Yeah, okay. It went up there on top. Up there. Okay. Alright, guys. I'm gonna... I'll be back with The battery's almost dead on this camera. I'm gonna put it on the charger. And I'll put this air cleaner housing on. Bolt it up in there. Put that all on. And then we'll go for a drive. Let this charge for a while. Alright, let's see. It might still have a little bit of a crank to start. Because I didn't let it run very long.
second. I don't want to lose that. Did I do a dumb shit deal and put it back there? Probably did. Ah, shit, I think it might be. right there there's the old hold down bolt for the injector it had a little bit of a clatter there didn't it Engine's still stone cold pretty much, so it's kind of sluggish. Uh, what gear are we in? Let's start out in first. day and I came down where the oh the road 90s it goes back to the south and I just turned around and came back and I shut it off and I mean as soon as I shut it off it would not restart Does tilt well work there we go I need another gear here fastest piece of shit will go four codes left in that pack R. So that pack R, we went from EPA 10 to EPA 17. So a little background on what happened there. So you never could get communication with the ECM. I finally figured it out. So of course, you know, from the older trucks, they the black OBD2, or not OBD2, nine pin Deutsch connector, they switched the pins around when they went to the green nine pin for the 500 kilobyte baud rate so what they did also on those they added an OCAN channel and I found out that that OCAN channel was added for the EPA or the government to tap into the to directly tap into the emissions so um, found all that out but anyway I had that I had to add wires inside the the wires were on the ECM of uh, the J2 plug they were already there but they weren't in the firewall on the J50 side inside the cab so I added two wires there and those went to the V can on the old harness was going to pin C and D on the 9 pin and the uh, on the new 9 pin the V can goes to pins F and G, and the uh, the uh, the O can. The guy's got to be careful here. 
I mean, a guy in this this ground out here, a guy can get stuck real easy. So don't want to get too wound up. So the, the V can goes to F and G, and the O can goes to C and D. So. I got all that and I got communication and then I had, I bet I had 50 after treatment codes, you know, uh, update rate error codes and all kinds of shit. And I got rid of most of those, finally traced it out and there was a fuse in the cab for the uh, ignition power blown so it wasn't, the wake up signal going to the after treatment control module, wasn't it wasn't getting it. So I got all those fixed, the only ones I got left I've got something going with the instrument cluster because it's not communicating with it right. And then I've got four throttle position sensor codes because the old truck had an analog throttle position sensor with an idle validation switch, whereas the new uh, oh, the new one has a, uh, why is that temperature on right there when, I mean, that shouldn't, nothing's hot. Not certain what that's about, but anyway, um, that was on the other day too. But I, uh, I know what the I, I called on on a Cummins on an ISX or any even an N14. Uh, well, an N14 you wouldn't do it anyway. But on ISX, you can switch that in Insight from an analog to pulse width modulated or vice versa. Well, Packard. They won't let you do that. You gotta buy the updated throttle pedal with the position sensor for fifteen hundred bucks. So I was trying to find just a position sensor for him somewhere. I was googling it trying to find it, but I was having Tom trying to get me a. I was gonna have Tom just get me a uh, a part number, and then maybe I could Google that part number and just find the position sensor and do that. So I'm getting there and I got it started, it runs. I got it running. So anyway, I didn't I didn't really intend on doing a what kind of loader this basin got on the back of there. I think they brought their loader just in case this one didn't I didn't get this one fixed. I'm kind of curious as to what size that one is. This is a bigger loader than that one is, it looks like to me. We'll go around the barn here and we'll see what. I gotta go with this end dump here. I gotta go right over here to this. I guess it's got a wire on the light circuit that's blowing the circuit breakers in the truck somewhere. So I gotta go look at that too. Oh no, they got Macy's out here. I see. Which I don't even know if they're... Oh, it's a 930H. This is a 938. bit bigger machine here. This is some pretty shit ground out here. This dairyman, he bought this from down south. And I remember years ago, that fertilizer, the agronomist for uh, the fertilizer company, he said that he used to take some of this ground out here and put it under a microscope. There was so much alkali and it looked like glass under a microscope. I mean, you gotta put a lot of potash and a lot of jip on this for this shit to grow. And that injector was causing a lot of problems because even one other day when I had it running, I it just was smoking and knocking and and kind of missing and then it was obviously leaking all the fuel back to return so let's uh what's it sound like sounds good shut it off and let it set for just a little bit 
because when it was warmed up, that's when it really screwed up. And then we'll pop the valve, the hood on it and make sure we got nothing going on there before we take off. We're gonna leave the hood up on it anyway. Out here in this area, you leave the hoods up because the pack rats That'll keep them out of here. They'll stay out from under the hood. They'll in the winter time, especially they'll be looking for a warm spot to play to stay, and they'll get in here and they'll chew the wiring harnesses in two and everything. So you leave the hoods up and they'll stay out of here. Make sure we got nothing valve cover gasket leaking or something fuel leak or anything like that going on. Ah. This bull by hose, I told him, I said, I got to get a bull by hose. It's it's not hurting anything right now, but it's one of them. It's the same thing Perkins does on all their junk, that plastic piece of shit. Okay. Where's the oil at? He needs to change the oil on this thing, man. It's black as well digger's asshole. So she's not adding fuel or anything to it, so. Well, moment of truth, huh? The other day, I mean, as soon as I parked it and tried to start it, it wouldn't start. As soon. So we let it set for a while. Let's see what it does. Success. <coughs> and I got a feeling I'll be back putting more injectors in it later. <laughs> I mean, they're all gonna have the same amount of hours and wear on them, you would think. It's kind of weird how one will fail before another one will. Especially when they're all have the same amount of time and hours and cycles on them. Ugh. Disconnect. Oh. oh, I gotta put that little wire clip back on that. Uh, I gotta put that wire clip back on that cotter pin for that other door. It's right there. Ah. And go in and look at that end down. See what the hell's going on with that. See so if we can find the wire that's screwed up there. We must have had this like this. And this was wound up through the cotter pin. Something like so. There we go. If it ain't chicken shit, it sure has hen house ways about it. Oh, oh come on. All right, job completed. I'll go over here. I don't know if we'll do much video on this. But Probably me tracing down a wire. He said that the junction box they had it unhooked and the truck driver had figured out which wire it was that was doing it based on what light or circuit breaker it was popping in his truck. And he said he had a junction box here somewhere. I mean you got this right here. Should be a junction box for the lights. Here somewhere. I do not see it yet. Huh. I mean, I see that, but. Oh, is this it? 
this goofy looking thing here. Huh. Must be this. What do you do? Take this thing apart and... <sighs> Must be this. Let me see which one he's got apart. Figure out what's going on with this. Alright guys, well, I gotta keep going here. And see if I can get this thing figured out and then maybe I'll get home before dark 30.